Hello and welcome back to Speed Freak Garage, home of Power Sports on YouTube. So today we are going to begin our journey into researching a custom rally suspension and that would be a gravel spec rally suspension for our 1987 Porsche 944 5.3 liter rally car. So right now I have no money because virus and because race car and race car number two and race car number three that need to be sold. So um, we're doing research and research is important and um, you don't want to buy something twice and you definitely don't want to pay for something twice. So the easiest and simplest thing to do first is going to be the rear suspension. And you probably think I'm crazy because the rear trailing arm suspension on this car is a nightmare, but we can make it simple. So if you look at three stages of upgrading a vehicle, uh, stage one is your street performance. Stage two is your street and track combination performance. And stage three is track only. So in the interest of budget, and time and sanity, we are probably only gonna go up to stage two in the rear suspension for this car. So to start, you wanna get your stage one measured up and out of the way. So I went under the car, I busted the OEM uh, shock loose and it's blown out so it makes this a little harder to do. But what you wanna do is you wanna get your measurements off your OEM shock. In this case, we want our extended length, our compressed length. You want your diameter for your mounting bolts and the width for your mounting. And this would be maximum width because you can always add spacers if you need to, right? Uh, you wanna get the diameter of the body and you wanna check underneath and see how much more diameter, body diameter you have left, which in this case, almost nothing because of the poor design of the car. Um, and so if we transition over to the other side where my other two problem children are sleeping, uh, this one is for drifting. This one is for sale, but it's waiting on a new bumper. Front bumper is a mess. So I got to get a new front bumper before I have a good conscience in selling the car for a very high price, hopefully a very high price so I can finish the Porsche. But so to measure your extended length, you cannot take for granted that this shock is in good condition. In this case, this one's blown. So you wanna work it and then you wanna get it as far up. I mean, if it's not blown, it'll extend itself, but you don't wanna take any chances. So you wanna make sure it's all the way up. And then what you do is you do center to center. That's really important. And you can use calipers if you wanna be more accurate, but in this case, it's 16 and 130 seconds extended, okay? And then you need to compress it. Now, the way I compressed it to get the measurement was really dangerous, so I'm not gonna show you, but figure out how to compress it safely, and you better make sure you got at least 100 pounds of force holding it so you know that it's fully compressed and that your bump stop if there is a bump stop in here, is squished a little bit. And I got 11.25 inches. So if we figure that there's a little bit of a margin for error, that's a five inch travel shock with 11.25 is dead bottom and we'll say 16.25 is full droop. And the reason why we need to know this is because this shock length is based on your CV joint angle of capacity, your maximum angle on your CV or safe operating angle. So if you get a longer shock than this, but you don't use high angle CVs, the moment that you full droop at high RPM, you blow your CV to pieces and you could cost yourself your life, honestly. I mean, it's serious. And it's the same thing if you get a shock that's not long enough, you will bottom out your tire into your fender and again, it could cost you your life. 
So this needs to be done right, and it can't be taken lightly or done half-ass. So in order to do, oh yeah, and so you measure your diameters, use calipers, obviously that's not good enough because it's a metric part, and then you, get, you can use calipers to get the width. In this case, it's a 12 millimeter bolt on the top, 42, 42 millimeters wide. On the bottom, the bastards used a 14 millimeter bolt just, just to make everything more difficult, and it's 42 millimeters wide also. And then your shock body is about two inches. And that's a good thing because you can get very high performance shocks with a two inch body. That's very, very lucky that they left a you know room up here. Um, so what's stage one? So stage one would be to get a off-road truck shock that uses this rubber bushing style. And it, you know, you might have to I don't know how you would, I don't know, you'd have to figure out how to probably honestly drill out or ream out this bottom hole to fit a 14 millimeter bolt or, eh, I don't know, honestly I don't, um, that makes everything more difficult. But you'd basically want to get a as close to this as you can, but for an off-road truck. And that would be stage one. You'd be looking at $150 per shock. I'll show you, we'll switch to my computer and I'll show you what I found. Um, now stage two would be to get a custom racing shock with a remote reservoir so the shock stays cool when you're going down gravel roads 300 miles a day. You know, I mean, that's a lot of abuse, way more than a standard shock could handle without a cooling reservoir. The problem is, is that there's this giant perch covering the whole top of the shock which is where the cooling reservoir hose comes out so you'd have to get a 90 degree adapter and hope to god that adapter doesn't restrict the oil flow and cause the shock to overheat again that's something you probably you'd probably have to call the shock manufacturer and figure out and i've sent like a dozen emails over the last two days and i've only gotten responses from two people nobody will answer their phone because of the stupid virus shit you know it's just making everything more difficult and it doesn't help that I don't have a job right now laid off. Obviously, I'm, I still have a job. I just can't go to it because everybody's shaking in their boots for no reason. But anyway, politics. Anyway, um, so yeah, stage two would be a same size five inch stroke shock, but with a cooling reservoir and maybe a little thicker body, a little thicker, you know, frame. Stage three, which I'm not going to do, Got to go back over here for stage three. So stage three would be to use a shock that's way bigger. I mean, maybe three inches. So it's a five inch stroke. I would say you'd want a shock with a minimum stroke of nine inches. So you're looking at a four inch larger shock. And how you do that is you would have to take the whole bottom of the car out the gas tank, the transaxle, probably even the whole trailing arm assembly would all have to come out. And your shock mounts are actually like right, they're like, I can almost touch it. It's like right here. So what they do is they take a torch and cut this out and then they would build a shock tower three to four inches, probably about three inches taller. A big super heavy duty reinforced shock tower that's reinforced to the frame here. Um, and they would bring it up so you can mount a longer shock and then they would have like a hole in the back so you can get your cooling tube out for your reservoir and mount your big ass shock reservoir right here where it can cool off. Or you could try to mount it underneath the car but there, there isn't much room. Um, so, but that, I can't do that. I can't afford that. It's too expensive, too time consuming. And I don't want to take the gas tank back out. If you guys watched the video of me putting the gas tank in and putting this filler tube back together, you know that this filler tube is never, ever, 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 ever coming out. I would have to take a pry bar and pry this stupid thing out and it would break it. And so then I'd have to buy a fuel cell and to put a fuel cell in this car is several thousand dollars in work. So stage three is out. So we're gonna do stage two. We're gonna do a race shock, slightly modified to fit the car as it is now. But we're missing something. 
even if we were going to use the off-road truck shock, so just a plain off-road truck shock, we have a problem. When you come down over a jump, the force and the velocity of the uh, sp sprung weight, unsprung weight, the force and velocity of the unsprung weight, which is about 100 pounds, coming up will snap your torsion bar. And it doesn't matter what torsion bar you buy, how good it is, how thick it is, it will snap when you come over a jump. So the only way to prevent that is to use a hydraulic bump stop, which is, in this case, it'll be about a three inch body with a two inch stroke. And basically it sits, so say here's my trailing arm at ride height, the bump stop sits here, 20% of my upper travel. So your upper travel is ride height and then compression. So 20% of your upper travel, it will touch the bump stop and then the remaining 20% closes the bump stop to zero. And the bump stop hits zero about a quarter inch before your shock bottoms out. So under no circumstance will your shock or your CV joint ever actually fully bottom out. The problem is on this car, the only place to mount that bump stop is right in the center of the frame rail, meaning you have to torch or cut a two inch diameter hole in the frame rail which is actually technically a little larger than the frame rail. And you gotta get that bump stop in there, and then you have two choices. You can weld the bump stop in, which means it's never coming out. I don't, probably not gonna do that. I'm probably gonna try and figure out a, a way to mount it temporarily, you know, like either uh, a threaded body or try and do a pinch mount. I don't like the pinch cans. They seem kind of janky, but they use them on off-road racing. So, um, so that bump stop, will prevent you from snapping your torsion var or worse, breaking something very expensive like the shock or the CV in this assembly. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of work. Um, so that's, that's the rear suspension. So we got our measurements. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to the computer and my computer microphone, I apologize, the computer microphone is garbage. It's a $15 Xbox headset that I use. I plug the headset into the Xbox controller and the controller goes wireless to my computer, long story. And then you get the microphone, that $15 microphone. So, I mean, it, it's good information I'm gonna share with you. It's just gonna sound awful. So I'm sorry, but that's, just live with it. So anyway, that is our, in-person explanation, we are now jumping over to the computer. Okay, so we are now over on the computer. So uh, we have our dimensions. The compressed length is 11 and a quarter. The extended length is 16 and 1 32nd. So if we assume a little margin of error, we're looking at a compressed length of 11 and a quarter with an extended length of 16 and 1 quarter. So we'll go ahead and fix that. With a, that means we have a stroke of five inches, which is pretty standard. Now, our top bolt diameter is 12 millimeters. Our mount width is 42. Our bottom bolt diameter is 14 millimeters because Porsche hates us. And our max width is 42. So we now need to go and figure out if there are any shocks that will fit. So if we want a stage one, we are looking at Fox Racing shocks. So we go to truck. We're looking at truck shocks, okay? You have your adventure, performance, and factory race. So if we go to the performance shock, you can get a two series internal floating piston. So slightly better than what the Porsche has now. And you can see it has that same style rubber bushing mounting, okay? So like, okay, well, that doesn't tell me anything. And you're right, it doesn't. Their website's kind of shitty because you can choose the year make and model of your truck but it has no resources whatsoever for you know custom applications however if you go to the truck catalog which is very misleading it should say application guide whatever and we scroll to uh blah blah, blah universal guide page 34 it's, it's, it's page 30 okay universal key so 
shows you how to measure, blah, blah, blah. We already did that. Uh, and uh, make it so you guys can read it. I can read it. You guys can't read it. And there's a cat meowing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you can first look at travel. Uh, okay, 5.1 inches of travel. And this is the performance series 2.0 smooth body. I, 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 I hate that. Fox, uh, I go back. When you click on that PDF, it should open a new window, and it doesn't. That's a really rookie website mistake. Anyway, so we're looking at the 2.0 IFP, which is internal floating piston. It's two inch diameter body, so it fits. So right here, 5.1 inch travel, compressed length 11.15, slightly shorter than our 11.25. Extended length 16.25, which is basically dead on with the Porsche shock. Stroke 5 inch, in this case it's 5.1, whatever, margin of error. Okay, now the problem is every Fox shock has, and I don't think they have a diagram, it has all these different eyelet options, but it doesn't tell you how to order them, and these aren't part numbers, so it's very frustrating. But every Fox shock comes with uh, it's, it, uh, it's not written anywhere but I, I, I've done days and days of research it comes with a half inch eyelet and half inch is basically 12 millimeter bolt so the top half inch eyelet will fit our bolt dead on um, where'd that universal guide go so the issue, the issue is the width of this eyelet. We don't know. We don't know if it's too wide. And it doesn't say, it doesn't bother to give you that information, which is pretty critical. However, on the bottom, it's still a half inch eyelet. And half inch is too small to fit a 14 millimeter bolt. And they make other eyelets. Uh, you can do the bushing. You can do the sleeve. You can do tall, short, but they don't have diagrams showing you how everything works, and they don't really explain it very well. A Heim mount is the highest quality, so the 14 millimeter bolt is a very close to 0.625, and I can prove that using Google. No, it's not 0.55. What? Crap, where did that part number go? I mean, 0.625 you could probably get away with, but they had a point, they had a closer one. Maybe that was only the racing shocks. Like, here's a 0.575, but it's a clevis. Because you want as close to 0.55 as you can get. 0.575 is pretty damn close. But it's a 2-inch long clevis, which I don't think is what we want. So... I mean, really, you stage one, if you want a stage one upgrade for an off-road racing shock, you could get this shock, you could play around with this bottom mount, you probably have to call Fox or one of their dealers and get some help finding a replacement that's the right diameter down here, and it would bolt right in, and it would work great, and you wouldn't have to do anything, and that's something I'm considering because it's really cheap, and it's easy, and it's simple. However... When you're going rally racing and you're doing 300 miles of mostly gravel roads a day, this shock's going to overheat. That's a fact. Don't argue with me. It's going to overheat. And the hotter it gets, the less of a job, the less, I don't know how to say it, the hotter it gets, the worse performance you will get out of it. To the point where it could start seizing up, you could blow your seals, you could... I don't think you can boil shock fluid. I've never heard of that happening, but I mean, you could destroy this shock in one day and there goes $150 per shock. So what's a stage two? How would I do stage two? So in this case, we're going to actually go back to uh, off-road. So Fox off-road, and you'll see a screen with a trophy truck on it, off-road shocks. And we're looking for the smooth body because none of these other styles will work. Well, here's the bump stop. So while I'm thinking about it, the bump stops that I've already chosen are the, nope. 
or the 2.0 diameter by 2.0 length. This is the smallest bump stop they make, basically, in the off-road factory race, like high-end. And it's $200 each. It's a lot of money. And I got all my Porsche 944 links here. Uh, well, I had a, I had a favorite. Anyway, um, yeah. So here's your bump stop. Um, Fox Factory Race 2.0 by 2.0 bump stop. The smallest one they make. That's you know har hardcore. Anyway, so smooth body. So the smooth body shock is basically the same as the IFP shock, except it's for real racing. I'm talking hardcore Baja class racing. Um, the problem is this little hose here. If you know your Porsche well at all, you will know that there is no room for this hose to stick out like this. It's going to have to be a 90 degree fitting and then a much shorter hose to the reservoir to mount the reservoir to the shock. And there might not be room to mount the reservoir to the shock. You might have to mount this reservoir somewhere else. Now there's a chance you could drill a big hole right here on the inside of the car and run this tube inside the car and then mount this to your roll cage. But number one, that introduces extra heat into the cabin of the car that you probably don't want in there because those cars are hot enough as they are with the exhaust and engine heat. And also, yeah, I don't know how well that would really work. I mean, honestly, you'd want a 90-degree fitting, some kind of high-flow 90-degree fitting, and then bring it straight down to your reservoir, which would be mounted here. And you could try to mount this shock inverted, but it won't last as long. Uh, the shock's not designed to be mounted inverted. It's designed to be like this. Um, I think you can mount it inverted. I don't think it's the end of the world, but it definitely won't last as long and perform as well. Um, now, here's our problem. If you remember... Uh, I screwed up. If you remember, we have this wonderful 11 and 1 quarter compressed, 16 and 1 quarter extended. Here's the problem. The 5 inch stroke smooth body remote shock, 10.75 basically. It's half an inch too short, which could blow up your CV. And it's a, it's a half inch, well, too short both ways, really. So you lose suspension travel on the bottom, and you could damage your suspension on the top end. Um, if we say, look at our, where was it? There was one that was closer. Um, you know, if you look at one of these class 11 custom mounts, you can get a 6.125 stroke. It's got 11.83 compressed length. So you lose half an inch of up travel. However, however, since your ride height is going to be raised one in, oh, I'm planning on raising my ride height one inch, that technically means I only lose half an inch basically of up travel. And the only thing you'd have to do is make sure the bump stop accounts for the shock being short so you don't blow the shock. I mean it's three hundred sixty dollar shock though. I mean that's one of the problems. Like you could get this six point five smooth body but it's a class 11 front and the way the fronts mount you really don't you don't want to do that so I mean we're looking at potentially buying this factory race and I'd only buy one to make sure I can make it fit because I'm not going to spend money on something if I don't know it's going to fit right why would you buy two and then they both don't fit and then you're stuck with two of them um, and this extended length doesn't actually matter so much in that and again, I thought I had, well, I'll go to, go to a different link, but it's the same website. Man, their website loads slow. So Poly Performance, really helpful people. Talked to them on the phone a couple times. Uh, they have limit strap. And you're supposed to have a limit strap with off-road setups. I just wish their website wasn't so slow. I hope they get that fixed. They said they were working on it. Come on. It's not hard there. So they have a limit strap. 
And so our maximum travel extended is 16 and 1 quarter. The limit strap stretches 1 inch for every 12 inch under load. So I did the math and I did the math already, but you're looking at a 15 inch long from eyelet to eyelet limit strap. And I mean I can do the math for you real quick. So you have a 16 No, no, no. I lied. Hold on. So it stretches 1 inch per 12 inches. 0.08333333, right? Okay. Uh plus 1, so you have 1.083333 times 16.25 No, I did that wrong. E. No, no, no. No, 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 me dumb. Sorry. 1 divided by 12. 0 0.08333333. Okay. And then... Plus 1. What did I do wrong? Ah, times 15 inch. And that's 16.25. So a 15 inch strap will stretch to 16.25 under load, meaning a full droop, you know, you got 100 pounds of unsprung weight at full droop. Um, and so you would use this limit strap to protect your CVs, basically. Um, that's what they're for, and the shock, obviously, and the torsion bars, and everything else, and your axles, and bearings, and whatever. Um, so you could Stage two, you could get a Fox factory race, 2 by 6.125 smooth body remote shock with a rear custom mount. Custom mount meaning call these people and tell them what you want, and they will help you out because, again, Fox is completely unhelpful and most of the time just says, talk to our dealers. They're, I don't like that attitude. You know, like I'm asking you about a very specific, very custom, very unique Oh, that's not right. Did I type in? It says smooth body. Uh, what the heck just happened? That's not right. It was right the last time. Uh, <laughs> oh, look that. That shock option isn't even in this list, so something's not something's not right. Uh, man, I feel dumb now. It worked the other day. Anyway, you you have to custom order the shock to get the right mounts and stuff. So you can actually get, you know, the mounting is one half by one point two five. So one point two five inch to millimeter is thirty two millimeters meaning you still have an extra 10 millimeters on the left or right to put washers in there and make it fit. Um, it's that um, the one half that's the problem on the bottom. And again, you can get a, you know, uh, and they usually have a catalog link. <sighs> this is why it's taken me several days to figure this out, because the, the resources just aren't there. Off-road catalog. And of course it downloads it instead of opening it open it in the window. Just... Um smooth body number seven. Eyelet chart. Oh yeah, here's the eyelet chart. That's right. This one's got a much better, but okay. You got all these eyelets options. Now, okay, here's the issue though. Where on here does it tell me what eyelet this comes with? Top mount, eyelet. Thanks, thank you. So helpful. So very helpful, you know, like it, it's the, the the eyelets are all different lengths and all different styles. So that's very, very frustrating when you can't even figure out the eyelet that comes with the stock, sh the, the shock stock without actually calling somebody. That's very poor website design. But anyway, um, so we know that it's a 5 8 shaft. So it's one of these three eyelets. It comes stock. The problem is it's a negative 8 heim. We need a negative 10 heim in order to um, fit that 14 millimeter bottom bolt. So what do you do?
Well, there is an option. It's not my favorite option. Um, no. Ah, give me a break, Google. Racer's Edge makes a adapter. That's not what I want. Uh, lower shock adapters. There we go. See, there's two. There's two. There's rear shock trailing arm bolts, which are this this big, bulky looking thing. And then there's the lower shock adapter, which is actually slightly lower profile. Um, and it's four half inch spherical ends. The problem is it's not for an off-road shock, so I don't know if it's wide enough to meet the spec. But I emailed this guy, and he, he responded right away. He said it's 0.4 something inches wide. So as long as... That's not the right part. As long as... The, and obviously they couldn't bother to say on the diagram. As long as their heim is 0.4 inches or narrower... This will work. Now it adds a little extra leverage to the aluminum arm that could cause problems in the future. But it's a shock. It's not a spring or it's not a coilover. So you should technically be okay. And of course valving. You also would want to have them talk. The valving you can get customized. I don't think it's any extra. So you also want to talk to them about valving. Um, no, wait. 1.25. It's way beyond this. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, this wouldn't work then. So you'd have to probably try to get a... You'd probably have to get a custom lower eyelet. <sighs> Man, it's... I've been dealing with this for days and days and days. So... Okay, and then... There's the stage 3 which stage three is just a big shock. So you'd be looking at a Fox factory race. Well, this, um, so for example, your compressed length is 11 and one quarter. So let's say I want to add a three inch tower to that. So that's 12, 13, 14 and a quarter compressed length which is the 8.5 smooth body shock. Now obviously you don't need that much travel, so you'd have to use the same limit strap. No. You you'd have to you'd have to use a limit strap to limit your travel to prevent damaging your CV joints. Um but the thing with the increased travel is that you have extra margin of error for the shock. And also, because it's a longer tube shock, there's more oil in there to stay cooler and generally is stronger. I think this is a 7 8 shaft. Where does it say that on here? It's supposed to say that. <sighs> and it doesn't, of course, it doesn't. It's unbelievable. 5 8 It's a 5 8 shaft? You can't do 7 8 until you get to the 10 which is probably too much. I mean, you could make a foot tall shock tower if you wanted. It would be pointless, but you could do it to get your 7 8 shaft. I don't really think that's necessary. Um, so my, my feeling, honestly, is to do the 6.125 smooth body remote shock, which, yes, will take away half an inch of up travel. It's not that big of a deal, especially if I have taller tires, I might not have that up travel anyway. And then I need to verify the upper and lower mounts. It says eyelet, but it doesn't have the courtesy to say which eyelet, which is very frustrating. And I also need to find a way to upgrade my eyelet to a negative 10 heim only on the bottom. And honestly, use the shortest possible one to try and gain 
some of that, you know, up travel back. Um, and then, of course, well, I already closed it, but of course, to limit strap and bump stop. So if I can, I hate that there's no image. I'm going to switch back to the 5. Oh, it's the same thing, just to give you guys an image. So you're looking at box, factory, race. Yeah, 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 box, factory, race, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what the hell? No, that's the wrong. See, there's two different factory races. There's factory race for truck. And there's off-road factory race. You want the off-road factory race. You want the hardcore shit. Uh, bump stop. I mean, you can go get a truck bump stop because it's got a threaded body. It might be easier to mount. That's really up to your fabricator or you if you're a good fabricator. I'm not. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get everything in order here. Poly performance limit limit strap. Come on, load. And uh, it's a 15. Okay. So, <clears throat> in order to upgrade the Porsche 1987 Porsche 944 to a rally ready rear suspension, oop, one more thing. Uh, sorry. Uh, There. Okay. You will need a a smooth body factory race high end remote reservoir shock. Then you will need to find a way to make it fit that ridiculous fourteen millimeter bottom bolt. And then you will need your hydraulic bump stop, limit strap, fifteen inch to protect your CVs if you're using a stock length um, and then 30 millimeter solid torsion bars the biggest thickest nastiest strongest torsion bars you can possibly get solid do not get hollow don't do it um, and then I'm also going to go with a full car spherical PTFE you know fancy fancy bushing kit because the spherical bushings with the PTFE liner are a next generation version of the old Delrin bushings. And Delrin was developed through off-road racing, um, Delrin bushings. And uh, the spherical PTFE lined bearings are the next generation of off-road racing technology. So they're worth it. And if you install them right, they should last forever, basically. I mean, let's be honest. So anyway, um that's about it so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you next time